Hey guys, it's Human Pup Katana here, and today I am going to be doing a video on um, bad versions of pup play, collars and leashes. Um, there's not a lot of them, but there are some, especially if you're going to be doing dog collars and leashes instead of getting them from, you know, uh, BDSM sites or even getting them custom made for yourself or making them yourself. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do that is bad. It's June, it's Pride Month. There's a lot of kink parades and festivals that are gonna be going on. There's a lot of events that are going to be going on. There's a lot of pups that are gonna be running everywhere, causing trouble like they should. Um, I'm gonna talk about bad versions of dog collars and leashes. These are just dog collars. Um, I mainly use dog collars. I will invest in a BDSM collar in the future. Uh, but for right now, I use dog collars because that's what works best for me. Uh, for starters, we're going to start off with a bad one. E-collar. This is my dog's personal one, which I put on my own, which I put on one of my collars. So basically, what e-collars are is... It's this little device where you have, usually every e-collar will have three settings. It'll have tone, which means sound. It'll have vibrate. And then it'll have shock. I am not shocking myself. Um, basically, shock isn't as bad as it sounds. It is a tinkle. But it can mess with the nervous system of a human because we do not have fur right here. The vibration setting isn't, isn't all that comfortable either. And also it has to be extremely not comfortably tight in order for it to work. And it can mess with talking a little bit. It hurts to talk. It can be used inappropriately. And I do not recommend them for humans because they are intended for dogs and they hurt. <clears throat> I wouldn't even say they hurt because we do not have fur right here. Um, there's no fur protecting from these probes. Another one I'm going to get into is choke chains. These can be deadly. Do not use them, and if you're gonna use them like I do, I use them for basically photos, I use them uh, as basically a necklace in my day-to-day -day life. I do not use this when in pup space, and if I do have one on, I do the simple thing, the carabiner. So now, this cannot tighten. It is not gonna tighten no matter what I do, because there is something locking both rings together so basically it's easy slip it on you don't have much trouble Ooh. it's just now a chain do not i repeat do not ever use this i don't even recommend them for dogs i do not recommend using them for bio dogs especially not human puppies because this can easily not loosen. So say say it tightens and then all of a sudden the leash falls, this is not going back. This is not unloosening unless you grab it and let gravity do the work. And it's especially not good if you've got someone or a dog fighting it because their air is cut off. So do not use these and if you're gonna use them, do not put, I don't even put, I don't recommend putting leashes on them either. Just simply hook it and leave it hooked. Do not let it tighten. So another collar, I've seen, I've seen a few pups wear some of these, but this is a martingale. So kind of a little similar to the choke collar, not really that dangerous. I just do not recommend them because they can be used as correction tools. Um, I don't mind people wearing these and you know, you just, just do your homework, please. Like I've seen some pups wear 
martingales that look like they were made for them. That they were like custom made. And you know, props to them. But I do not recommend having a leash attached to this. And if you're gonna wear one, make sure it's extremely loose because you do not want this thing all of a sudden tightening around your neck. And this is my dogs, of course. So say it's like really, say it's like really snug, like a lot of collars are. Suddenly this thing catches on something. All of a sudden, your, your wind is cut off. Um, I don't recommend these for like newbies. Um, a lot of these are not recommended for newbies. Another thing, um, head collars. So say you do have a hood on and, or even sometimes they can be used uh, let me loosen this a bit. They can be used on humans sometimes if you get the right size. So basically what they do, they slip over the nose and then they clip at the back of the head. So I'm going to use a stuffed animal to demonstrate. So basically they slip over the muzzle. And yes, it should be enough where you can open your mouth, pant, you know, hold things. This is not a really a muzzle. This is a head collar. So e either if you're a human or, you know, a dog, um, you should be able to dog or human, human pup should be able to open their mouth, you know, pant, you know, whatever, drink. Um, why I don't recommend these is these can be strain on the neck. So... What they do is, you've got the loop right here, so if you attach a leash to it, uh, it works as a, you see what he's doing? And it's, it, it's a stuffed animal, I realize that, but it pulls by this part to turn. And that can be a little bit dangerous um, because it can catch, um, among other things, it just should not really be used for human pup play, in my mind. And these are all basically my opinions. If you're going to go against it, please use the correct, you know, safety precautions and everything like that. Uh, another one I do not recommend, and I do wear this, but I do not recommend for moshes, uh, is... Big, huge spike collars. Now, you're probably going to be like, ooh, yeah, I like that. Um, if you're at the dog, if you're at a pet store and you see one of these, you're going to be like, ooh, yeah, you know, that's cool. I want that. They're big. They're thick. They're made to go on very tough breeds. Um, and they always have very strong leather, usually. Um, that's if you get a good quality one. <laughs> and they're going to be... Um, these do not feel good if you're playing with someone else. Uh, now, me and Daiki, my pup sister, we both have this type. And this hurts. If you accidentally get poked, it hurts. So, I recommend using collars like this. You know, use collars that don't have any harmful things if you're going to be pup if you're going to go into a puppy mosh, which means you're going to get get on the floor and play with other puppies. Um, these are very good, comfortable. You can wear them for a long time. They last a long time. They're strong. They're tough. Um, actually, I'm going to re-put this on. So, we're going to get into leashes real quick. Um, only bad ones I can think of is, this is a dog tie-out chain. Um, and no, I do not use this for my dog. This is used for hangmen's. Uh, so this is a haunted house prop that I use for my character. So basically, I made this little part right here. So I could easily attach chain. And I've got a carabiner in case I need to be chained to anything. Um, this is strictly used for haunted house only it's got just a whole bunch of fake blood on it it's old it's dingy but it's light weight so that's good um these do not feel good if you're in a puppy tug of war this does not feel good on your hand 
Um, even though you can, I seem to be able to hold this one better than the other one. But it can still hurt, um, especially if you're running around playing. Um, it hurts. Uh, another one is you will see chain, actual chain leashes with a handle. Um, and if you're going to buy one of these, I do not recommend these for pup moshes, but these are really cool for, you know, photo shoots, just to go to an event if you plan on not playing, like I a lot of times do, you know, they're very good. Uh, they're pretty heavy. Um, do not, if you're going with someone, do not let them drop it immediately. Just do not let them drop it. Let them hold it and then unclip you from it and then they can toss it aside or whatever. These things will leave a bruise. These things will hurt. These things, if held wrong, can break fingers. You know, these are not to play around with and, um... Use whatever you feel is com most comfortable with. Uh, do not let anyone um, talk you into something that you do not like. Say you don't like chains and spikes. And your handler or whatever, your S significant other or whatever does, uh, talk to them about it. You know, um, start out with just a simple, just flat buckle collar and leash. You don't have to start out on these huge expensive... Uh, spike collars and leather collars immediately. Um, get whatever works best for you. So while these are very nice and I absolutely love mine and I would not trade it for anything in the world, I don't recommend these for first time users. Because these can get in the way of play even if you're not playing at a pup mosh. These can hurt your significant other if y'all are in a play scene or doing something else um something i shall not name and basically yeah these these look pretty they look badass but proceed with caution that's all for now bye guys